Hi everyone, Katie Pertit here from katiepertitdesigns.com. Thanks for joining me in my studio. Today, I want to share with you making a mixed media card with my new birdsong uh, stamps from Sussex and 49 and Market and my thankful sentiments also from Sussex and 49 and um, using some paper here from my birdsong collection for 49 and Market. And I wanna show you my techniques and what I enjoy doing when I'm doing a mixed media card. Generally, when I'm working, I just kind of wing it from the start to the finish. But for this video, I did think it through, got out all the supplies I think I'm going to be using. Some I may not use, but um, we'll just see how it goes. And I'll just show you how really simple it is to make a really nice card. Okay, so I'm gonna set these stamp packages aside. And let's see, so I've got two four by six papers. The um, heavy cardstock white paper that I trimmed down just a little bit off each end so that when I'm all done, I'll be able to nicely mount it on this cardstock, which is from the Birdsong six by eight pack. Okay, so let's start with our plain blank piece of paper. And what I like to do is to start to add some interest to the background. And I'm gonna do that with the oxide in speckled egg. So you just take it out, kind of dab it a little bit on your acrylic block. I like to use an acrylic block because it really um, gives you a bit more control over what you're gonna do. Not a whole lot of control, I mean, cause this is a wet watery mess, but it does give you some control. Now I'm just going to smear it all in one direction for right now over the background of my card. And I like the splashes and the mess that it leaves. I think that adds visual interest and so I'm going to let that go. And then I would come in and dry it. So I'm not going to bug you with the sound and I will speed this part up. Okay. I think that's got it dry. You do wanna make sure you are completely dry and I'm gonna clean up the surface here. And if you noticed, I flipped the card over and that's because when your card starts to kind of curl, if you dry it on the back side, I have found that it um, curls the other way and kind of straightens it all out. All right, so we've got um, a bit of a background here. And now that I'm looking at it, I'm already kind of changing my mind because that's how I work. I like to just go freestyle. So let's see. Um, maybe we're going to use a light gray archival. And I'm going to get, these are some of the stamps from the Birdsong collection. And I think I'm gonna use the um, some of the handwriting. So, oops, I gotta clean off my acrylic block. Okay, and I will put the handwriting on there. And I just, I want it to be subtle. Just adding like text or texture and visual interest to the background because my plan for the design is to have three little birds go across and then a sentiment, a thankful sentiment across the bottom. So let's see how this goes. Um, and being a graphic designer, I do have my share of hangups, one of which is the visual triangle. You can see I goofed because I had that acrylic block in the way but that's okay. 
no mistakes. Everything can be worked into the design. Turn it this way. I'm gonna stamp it down here. And I'm gonna come back and stamp it over here. All right, that gave us some good visual interest. And then if you follow me, you probably see that I tend to add acrylic paint over that, which again, I didn't think I was gonna do, but as I get going, I change my mind. So I'm just using some basic Sussex white acrylic paint. You can use any paint you desire. And what this does is just kind of softens it back a little bit. And I use this brayer. It just feels really good in my hand. And so I really like it. Um, and just kind of lightly roll. Don't push with a lot of pressure. You're just kind of picking up the acrylic and moving it. I think maybe we need just a little bit more up here. So I'm just barely squeezing the bottle to try to get some out because I don't want a lot, just enough as they say. Okay, so there we're all set now with the acrylic and I'm gonna let that dry and come right back. Okay, I really like how this background has turned out and I think we're ready to start stamping. So like I said, my plan is to do like the three birds across the card and then a sentiment at the bottom. So I'm gonna visually center the first bird, kind of thinking about where he's gonna go. And of course, actually I'm gonna kind of move him up. So centered horizontally, slightly up vertically. Um, I always, kind of visually center, but if you struggle with that, you can always uh, grab a ruler and measure and use a stamping pad and get it right where you want it. I'm using archival inks to ink it up because I wanna go back in and paint. We're gonna see how that works out. Okay, so I've got my first bird and can only hope I'm accurate here. We're gonna go and stamp them. You wanna rub over, I struggle, I'm sure others struggle. Sometimes you don't rub enough and then you don't get enough of the image. So the first one looks good. It looks like maybe he's a little to the right, but it also could be because of the balance of the image, the tail's heavier and it draws you to the right more. Okay, let's go with our other bird here. I think that's about the same height. So we will put him there. And again, if you struggle with guessing or you like it really, really perfect, I suggest using a um, stamping pad. Like there's a few out there, Sussex has one and so do some others, okay. And here is my last one. I think it's actually coming out pretty centered. Push on him. Okay, yay, I think that's pretty centered. Okay, so I've got my three birds, although he's down a little bit, but that's okay. No mistakes, right? Everything's fine. All right, let's find the sentiment now that I would like to use, and we will get that stamped. And let's see, I've got to dig through my stamps. I did not get that actual stamp out. Um, oh darn, of course I have like the packaging out, but I didn't have the actual stamp. All right, so I've got my stamp and I'm using the Grateful Hearts stamp. So I'm gonna ink it up. I'm gonna ink it up with the same Seafarer Blue archival ink that I was using before. Um, 
Make sure it's good and inked up here. And then again, I'm gonna visually center and align under this middle bird. Push. I want to move it when I move things it's like I smear it across the page and I don't want to do that okay that wasn't too bad so there is my sentiment and now for the fun part let's start getting messy with it or not messy getting creative and um, painterly whatever you'd like to call it so a lot of times you see me on my reels using the magicals, just kind of sprinkling them. And then, um, I swear I'd use this one. Um, sprinkling them and then squirting them with water. And I really do like that effect, but there are a lot of other ways you can use these. And one of them, and this is my first time trying, so we're gonna see how this goes. One of them is taking your paintbrush and dipping it into the magicals and then painting. Okay, so let's see how this goes here. Dun, dun, dun. It's a lot of magicals. All right, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna kind of squeeze my little water thing and I'm gonna start painting him. Oh, those are fun. Okay, so what, and what this is gonna do, what makes the magicals different than like regular watercolor is they've got the um, sparkly sheen when you buy the magical ones, not the flat ones, but the magicals. And I'm gonna just grab some regular water and kind of mix that up a little bit more. Like maybe I wasn't getting enough water in that watercolor brush to paint him. All right, let's try it again because I have an awful lot of magicals on here. So I'm gonna kind of give his wing a little definition. And you know what? We might be needing another color so that I can add a contrasting color for his underbelly. All right, so bear with me here. I really do like the painting with them and I'm looking forward to seeing the, the sheen. Okay, let's get our third bird, give him some color. And again, that one got a little heavier. So I'm gonna go in with some water, lighten it up a little bit, bring it up into the tail. And there's so many ways you could approach this. You could do this by painting birds on watercolor paper and then using the dye in the pack to cut it out and give your card some dimension. Oh, that's fun. All right, so what I'm doing right now is just kind of trying to give the wings a little bit more dimension by going in there directly with my little watercolor brush. Okay, I like that, but I think we need to bring in some more color. So let me be right back. Okay, so I'm back and I grabbed some fuzzy navel from the Drink Me Silly set. And I'm going to give that a go for the belly. That'll add a nice contrast to the card design. So, and the other thing I really like about the Magicals, can you see that not only is there orange, but there's also some pink in there. So it gives you variety in your color. And I think that when you're creating um, having a variety of color gives your project depth and interest and a lot of times helps take it to the next level. All right. 
Oh, that looks nice, right? The orange really helps give it some oomph. So it's not so terribly monochromatic. I mean, I do love a good monochromatic, but sometimes you just need to come in with some contrast. And blue and orange are complementary colors. So they do work nicely together. All right. That's working out well. Oh, nice. Got some yellow in there. Grab some of the blue from the body. That way they're not all the same too. That gives your project a lot of interest. Now I'm thinking what I'm gonna try, hopefully it looks okay. I'm gonna add almost like a drop shadow under our sentiment and see how that works. Does that help? tie it all together. Actually, instead of just a drop shadow, maybe I need it all the way around. And see, I got like some orange and yellow in there. That's the really lovely thing about these magicals. Yes, it's fuzzy navel, but it's more than that. Okay, adding extra water to kind of blend it out. See, we used archival inks, so our ink is not um, blending or um, degrading. Okay, I think I really like that. Do you like that? Hmm, all right. I am thinking one more thing now. And of course, none of this was in my plan, but that always makes it better. I'm going to go for it and add a little bit of the magicals on the edges. Ah, let's see, a good way to just lightly bring them across the edges. I don't want a huge border. I don't want it to take away from the birds. In fact, I'm gonna kind of dab that one back a little bit. So that got really fuzzy navel, didn't it? And now we'll just have to make sure we balance that really heavy fuzzy navel out with another area that gets a little heavy so that it's not, your eye isn't drawn to just that one place. You wanna go visual triangle and have your eye go full circle or whoever you send this to, you want them to look at it, go full circle and see your grateful sentiment. Because that after all is the purpose of this card is to show your thanks to somebody. Hopefully somebody who appreciates all of the time and effort that you put in to hand making a mixed media card. So not only does it give you joy in the making, but it gives them joy in the receiving. That's the goal of all this, isn't it? At least I think it is. You know, I haven't always been a card maker, but it is definitely growing on me these days, especially when you go into the store and see how much they cost. So since I like to make things, spending my time making and giving gives me a lot of satisfaction. Okay, I really like that. Do you like that too? I think it's very balanced and I like the blue and the orange. I'm gonna put this lid back on, take that wet out of there before I mess up this whole jar because I have spilt some of the magicals on my desk before and then everything is magical. And we don't need everything to be magical today. Okay. All right, so now my card is all done. Can you see the shimmer with the light like that? A really nice shimmer. That's the joy of the magicals. 
Okay, now we've got this background paper that I had picked out. Um, <laughs> you know, I, the back side would be nice too. What happens when I do that? You know, that kind of works too. But I'm going to stick with my original plan and go with the stripes. Actually, no, I'm not because I really like how this looks. Okay, we need to go with a peach background. I will be right back with a peach background. All right, I am back with a peach background. And I think that works nicer. Definitely helps bring in the contrast and adds a lot more interest to the card. So all I'm gonna do is I use this Tombow adhesive my friends at memory bound told me that this was their favorite adhesive and so they got me hooked too so it's an awesome store in Ankeny Iowa I went to college in Iowa so have a definite connection there uh, if you're ever in the area I highly recommend visiting memory bound Okay, now I'm just gonna visually center it. Looks like I'm a little high, pull it up. And you could measure and give yourself little tick marks, but I just, I never do that. Okay, push it down and there you go. The card is finished. Simple as that, and it is ready to go. And that was a pretty simple mixed media card. Again, we used my bird song. Let's see, where are the packages? So we used my bird song stamps, and there's dyes in here too. And we used the thankful sentiments, and you have a variety of choices in here for your thank you cards. And we used the bird song um, papers from 49 and Market, some archival inks, some oxides, some more archivals, and of course these Lindy is magical. This um, color is from the uh, Autumn Leaves pack, and this one is from the Drink Me Silly set, the Fuzzy Navel. So. I'll have links below where you can find those. Um, otherwise, ask your favorite retailer and they'll be able to hook you up. All right, thanks for joining me, everyone. Please remember, if you like this video, to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I post a video. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them below. I always come back and answer my questions. All right. Thanks again, everyone. See you again soon. Bye now.